Another salawat for the love of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. A third salawat for the love of Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Historians have referred to this verse that I just recited, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِنُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ as one of the first times that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi used the term Shia. Because there's a debate amongst the Muslims, when did the Shia start? When did Shi'ism start in the Muslim calendar. Some people, they say it started after Ashura. Others, they say it started during the time of the Abbasi government, during the time of Imam al-Baqir and Imam Sadiq. And many have theories as when did the Shia school of thought begin and when was that term used? However, in our opinion, the Shia school of thought, it started with the religion of Islam and it never separated away from the religion of Islam. The first day Rasulullah introduced the religion of Islam to people, that was also the day he told them to follow Ali ibn Abi Talib the verse in the Quran in Surah Al-Bayyinah, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَٰئِكَ هُمْ خَيْرُ الْبَرِيَّةِ Historians, they say that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi he said that when Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi said that when Ali ibn Abi Talib walked in, Rasulullah said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ إِنَّ هَذَا وَشِيعَتُهُ لَهُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And then he said, and Ali ibn Abi Talib is خير البرية. He is the best of creation. And the narrations, they say that when Rasulullah, when Ali ibn Abi Talib used to walk into a room or into the masjid, the Muslims and the Sahaba, they used to say, Ja'a khayru al-bariyya, the best of creation has entered. And the proof for the advent of Shi'ism is with the same proof of the advent of Islam. The same day Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi told people to accept him as a prophet and accept his risalah, that same day he also told them that Ali is the Imam and the Khalifa and the Wazir and the Wasi after me. When, how do we come to this conclusion? 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first occasion where he ordered Rasulullah to invite people towards the religion of Islam. When was that? That was according to the verse Hadith al dar And that was when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi he invited his family before Allah, before Allah ordered Rasulullah to publicly announce the religion of Islam, he ordered Rasulullah to call upon his close ones first. Because Allah says, Al-Aqrabuna awla bin ma'roof wa andar ashiratakal aqrabin. Bring down, invite your family first, invite your ashira first. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he gathered his family. He gathered his family, and one of them was Ali ibn Abi Talib, who at that time he was a young man. He told his family, he told them, "Who out of me, who out of my compa- who out of you will believe in the message that I have sent, that I have been sent with? Because I have brought you a message that no one has brought his family." So. He told them that he's a prophet. He told them about the Risala. And then he asked his family. He told them, who of you will believe in me? Who of you will follow me? Who of you will be with my supporter? This person will be my Khalifa. He will be my Wazir and he will be my Wasi after me. That time it was only the family of Rasulullah. But you see that even the family at that time, no one accepted Rasulullah. But there was one voice that said, Ana ya Rasulullah, I will follow you, O Rasulullah. And that was Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. And then Rasulullah said, Idan anta khalifati wa wasiyyi wa waziri min ba'di. You are the khalifa, you are the wasi, you are the wazir after me. So here we see that Rasulullah, the same day he told people to believe in him as a prophet, he told them and he appointed Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. So this is the proof that the imamah and the wilayah came with the religion of Islam. And today historians, Muslim historians, they say that there were, from amongst the sahaba of Rasulullah, there were Sahaba that were known to be the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Because Rasulullah said, Anta wa Shi'atuk khayrul bariyah. You and your Shia are the best of creation. And there were known Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib during the time of Rasulullah. Ammar ibn Yasir, Salman al Muhammadi, Al Maqdad. These were known to be Shia's of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Abu Dhar al Ghafari. And you see that many of these companions of Rasulullah, they were companions, but just because they followed Ali ibn Abi Talib. Of course, following Ali ibn Abi Talib, it means following Rasulullah. It's not a different path from the path of Rasulullah. But they had love for Ali ibn Abi Talib. You see that most of the ones who showed love to Ali ibn Abi Talib, they were killed. They were killed off by Muawiyah. A man today, People, they consider him the Sahaba of Rasulullah. One of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, you see that he killed hundreds of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In the battle of Safin, hundreds were killed. Many of the companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen who happened to be Sahaba of Rasulullah, they were assassinated by Muawiyah. And today we are accused of disrespecting the Sahaba while you see Muawiyah, he killed off many of the Sahaba. Many of them, he killed them off. Who killed Ammar ibn Yasir? Ammar ibn Yasir was one of the first Muslims. His parents, they were the first martyrs in Islam, Yasir and Sumayya. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he tells, he tells Ammar, تَقْتُلُكَ الْفِئَةِ الْبَاغِيَةِ You will be killed by the group that has been misled and that has been has gone astray from the religion of Islam. On the day of Safin, in the battle of Safin, he was killed, Ammar was killed by the army of Muawiyah and many other Sahaba. 
Hijr ibn Adi. Muhammad ibn Abu Bakr. This is the son of Abu Bakr. But just because he had happened to be the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib, he was killed by Muawiyah. And his body was stuffed in the body of a dead donkey and it was burned. Now you know where Daesh, where they get their inspiration from? They get it from their role model. Another man, another man, Amr ibn, Ham, Amr ibn al Hamad al Khuzai. This was one of the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Historians say that he was killed by Muawiyah and his head was the first head that was carried across the towns and across the cities in the religion of Islam. Awwal ra's yutafu bihi fil Islam. The head of Amr ibn, Hamad, ibn al Hamad al Khuzai. This man who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi did a dua for him. There was a story with Rasulullah. One day Rasulullah told him, may Allah prolong your youth. And they say that his head, he was 80 years old. He was an old man, but his beard was all black when it was being carried across the villages and the cities. Who did this? This was Muawiyah. Where does Daesh and these terrorists get their inspiration from? They get it from their role model. The first terrorist in Islam, one of the first terrorists in Islam, it was Muawiyah. You see that many of the Shias were killed. And this is why, don't be surprised when you see the Shias are attacked today. The Shias are discriminated against today. There's a sunnah to this. There have been others that started this. And until today, they have their followers. Now, we need to analyze who are the Shia, and what does it mean to be a Shia? Because many people, they think that it's just a name. It's just a name, and you go by that name. Is it truly just a name? In Islam, joining the religion of Islam, yes, anyone who says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah becomes a Muslim. However, According to the narrations of the Ahlul Bayt السلام, reaching the level of Iman and becoming a Mu'min, it requires action. It's not just words. Not anyone can just come and say, I'm a Shia, and therefore they are a true Shia of the Ahlul Bayt السلام. And this is a very important issue because some of the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt today, they say that it was the Shia that killed Imam al Hussein. It was the people of Kufa. The people of Kufa, they wrote letters to Imam al Hussein inviting him to come to Kufa. Once he came, they sent out an army that killed Imam al Hussein and didn't allow Imam al Hussein to enter Kufa. They say it was the Shias. And this is not something that I'm just saying. There's actually scholars and speakers and pamphlets that are being passed out, especially during these days, the days of Ashura, the days of Muharram. They say, look at the Shia. Now they beat their chests, crying for Imam al Hussein, but it, because they are in remorse that it was them that killed Imam al Hussein. Now we need to analyze this. We need to see who killed Imam al Hussein. And who was responsible for the murder of the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And it wasn't just a murder. It was a type of killing where even the children of Imam al Hussein were killed. The body of Imam al Hussein was stomped with the hooves of the horses. So who killed Imam al Hussein alayhi salam? In order to reach a conclusion, we have to look at how how many groups there are in regards to the Ahlul Bayt? And what are the belief systems of those groups in regard to the Ahlul Bayt? You see that there is one group that are known for their hatred for the Ahlul Bayt And these are the Nawasib. These are the ones that showed hatred to the Ahlul Bayt from day one. And until today they show hatred to the followers of the Ahlul Bayt these are the ones that when you hear the news two days ago in Qatif, someone goes and he starts shooting people that are attending a majlis. And we hear about this all the time. And they see the day of Ashura as a day of celebration. And this is no joke. There are people out there who consider themselves Muslim 
But yet they see the day of Ashura, the day that the grandson of Rasulullah and the family of Rasulullah were massacred on the day of Karbala, on the day of Ashura is a day of Eid. And they celebrate that Eid by fasting on the day of Ashura as a celebration, as a form of celebration. There are people out there. And you see the pamphlets that are being passed out as the day of Ashura comes. If you follow the social media, you'll see people saying, don't forget to fast on the day of Ashura because it's a day of Eid. It's the day that Rasulullah saved Prophet Musa and saved all Prophet Nuh and all of the other prophets. Of course, these are all fabricated lies. Because Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he speaks about the day of Ashura. He says, Allahumma inna hada yawmun tabarrakat bihi banu Umayyah wa banu akilat al-akbad. This is the day that Bani Umayyah saw it as a day of barakah. And you see their followers until today. <coughs> showing the hatred towards the followers of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Towards the ones who cry for the Ahlul Bayt. I don't know. What, the, what have we done to them? How do our tears for Imam al Hussein and crying for Imam al Hussein, how is it bothering them? We're not doing anything to them. But you see that they are uncomfortable when people remember the family of Rasulullah. Why? Because when you remember the family of Rasulullah, you're going to remember who oppressed them, who abused them, who took the power from them. And therefore, therefore you will know the truth. And people do not want the truth to be known. Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, he says in one hadith, he says, لَيْسَ النَّاصِبْ مَنْ نَصَبَ لَنَا أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ لِأَنَّكَ لَا تَجِدْ أَحَدًا يَقُولْ أَنَا أَبْغُضْ مُحَمَّدْ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدْ He says the nawasib صَلُّ عَلَى مُحَمَّدْ وَآلِ مُحَمَّدْ he says the Nasib, the Nasibi, the one who shows hatred to the Ahlul Bayt, he's not going to come and say, I hate Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, the family of Rasulullah. You don't find anyone saying, I hate Ali ibn Abi Talib. Although indirectly they do show it, but no one is going to come and say, I hate the Ahlul Bayt. But what they say, the Imam says that the Nawasib, they're going to show the hatred to you, the Shias of the Ahlul Bayt. They're going to be killing the Shias of the Ahlul Bayt. They're going to be massacring the Shias of the Ahlul Bayt. And this is what we see today. Today, you look in the world, you, if you're up to date with what's going on in the news, you see that wherever there are Shias, they are discriminated against. They are abused. Their power is taken from them. They are being harassed. Why? Their only crime is that they love the Ahlul Bayt, Otherwise, if we were just like all the other Muslims, if we were careless, if we didn't care, if we showed love to everyone, the one who killed and the one who was killed, there wouldn't be sanctions against the Shia countries. There wouldn't be governments bombing, coalitions bombing the Shias of Yemen, as we see today. Why? Their only crime is that they are followers and lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. So this is one group, the Nawasib, that show their hatred to the Ahlul Bayt and the followers of the Ahlul Bayt. And then there's another group in regards to the Ahlul Bayt. These are the ones who, they say we love the Ahlul Bayt, but we also love the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. We love the Qatil and the Maqtul. All of them, they are radiallahu anhum. All of them. You go... There, before Daesh went and destroyed the grave of Hijr ibn Adi, Al-Kindi in Sham, a, there was a plaque written on the grave of Hijr ibn Adi. It said, Hada qabr al-sahibi al-jaleel. This is the grave of the Sahaba of Rasulullah, one of the companions of Rasulullah al-Jaleel. Radhi Allahu anh, may Allah be satisfied with him, who was killed by the Sahabi Al-Jaleel, by the Honorable Sahabi Muawiyah radiallahu And there are some Muslims who actually fall for this. They say all of them are radiallahu All of them may Allah be satisfied with them. And Rasulullah, they, there's a hadith attributed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that we do not accept. The hadith says, Rasulullah supposedly he said, Ashabi kan nujum. My companions they are like the stars. 
Whichever one you follow, you will be guided. Anyone that you follow, they will guide you to the right path. Now, here, where's the principles of the Qur'an? Where's the principles that Rasulullah brought the Muslims? Why does the Qur'an give us a long story of Qabil and Habil, the two sons of Adam? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us so many stories in the Qur'an? Isn't it so that I choose which side I'm on? Isn't it so I stay against oppressors? Doesn't Allah say, Ala la'natullahi ala zalimeen? The ones who oppress, the ones who are munafiq, the ones who are hypocrites. And this is why we need the day of Ashura. Because it constantly reminds us to stay with, against the zalim. To have a voice against the zalim. Against the oppressor. Imam Hussein alayhi salam, he constantly reminds us to have a stance, a firm stance against the oppressors. And this is why you see that the tyrants, they are afraid of the day of Ashura. You see tyrants, governments, and dictators, they don't want people crying for Imam Hussein. Because when people cry for Imam Hussein, they will stand and they will question the tyrants of their time, just like Imam Hussein questioned and he stood against the tyrant of his time, Yazid. And then there's a third group. The third group, they are the ones who love the Ahlul Bayt. However, their love to the Ahlul Bayt, it is so extreme where it reaches a level of ghulu. It reaches a level where they are leaving the faith because that because of so much love for the Ahlul Bayt. And there were people like that during the time of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, he says, Halaka fiya rajulan, two types of people will perish because of me. Muhibbun ghal wa mubghidun qal. One of them, who is a muhib, he loves me, but his love drives him to leave Tawheed and leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not what kind of love Amir al-Mu'mineen wants. This is not what the Ahlul Bayt wanted. They wanted people to love them. Allah orders us to love the Ahlul Bayt. But the Ahlul Bayt, they are a means that brings us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If someone says, I only love the Ahlul Bayt and I don't care about Allah, I don't care about anything else, this is haram, this is ghulu. And this is something that the Ahlul Bayt, they were the first to speak against. Today you find people, they say we love the Ahlul Bayt. And then they do not follow the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt. They start, they start cursing and abusing and using foul language towards everyone else who disagrees with them. Is this truly what the Ahlul Bayt want? Go and look at the lives of the Ahlul Bayt, the morality, the akhlaq that the Ahlul Bayt had. The Ahlul Bayt, they bring people towards Tawheed. If I'm going to leave the path because of loving the Ahlul Bayt, then the love of the Ahlul Bayt has not helped. And this is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he compared Amir al-Mu'mineen to Isa, to Jesus. Why? He tells him there's going to be a group of people that will hate you just like a group of people hated Jesus and they did not believe in him. And then there's also going to be a group of people that will love you so much just like there was a group of people that began to worship Jesus, and they considered him God. And there were people during the time of Imam Ali that considered Ali ibn Abi Talib to be God. And this is false. This is not a true Shia of the Ahlul Bayt And finally, the fourth category is the true Shias, the true followers of the Ahlul Bayt the ones who use the Ahlul Bayt in order to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The ones who use Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Ahlul Bayt in order to reach Rasulullah. Because we follow Amir al Mu'mineen and the Ahlul Bayt so that we get closer to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And this is why we are following the Ahlul Bayt because we believe they were the closest ones to Rasulullah. They were the ones that can give us the true sunnah of Rasulullah, the true religion of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now, we need to see the ahadith, the narrations 
of the Ahlul Bayt that speak about the virtues of the Ahlul Bayt. And what kind of characteristics do the Ahlul Bayt have? When we look at the narrations, we see that the Ahlul Bayt, they say being a Shia is not just something where you consider yourself, you call yourself a Shia of the Ahlul Bayt and therefore you're a Shia. It's not like Islam where anyone can consider themselves a Muslim as soon as they say the Shahada. In the hadith from Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam, he says, لا تذهبن بكم المذاهب فوالله ما شيعتنا إلا من اتقى الله وأطاع Do not let these sects get over you and overcome you, say, I'm from this sect, I'm from this group of people. And then he says, فوالله, I swear to Allah, ما شيعتنا إلا من اتقى الله وأطاع Our Shi'as they are the ones that obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the ones that worshipped Allah. <coughs> These are the qualities of the Shia of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. In another hadith from Imam al-Rada alayhi salam, he says, Shi'atuna al-musallimuna li-amrina, al-akhiduna bi-qawlina, al-mukhalifuna li-a'da'ana, faman lam yakun kathalik falaysa minna. Our true Shi'as, they are the ones that obey the orders of the Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. When Imam Sadiq says, and when the Ahlul Bayt, they say you have to pray, you have to fast, you have to go to Hajj, you have to pay khums and zakat. We have to follow the orders of the Ahlul Bayt. I cannot just consider myself a Shi'a of the Ahlul Bayt and I ignore all of the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam. And then he also says, المخالفون لأعدائنا The ones who object and stand against our enemies. Because there are some people, they say, I'm a Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. But it's okay, ma'lash, leave the ones who... It's okay, listen to them, take your religion from them. Yes, this is wrong, because we have to take our religion from one group of people, and that is the ones who Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi ordered us to follow. In another hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he says, كَذَبَ مَنْ زَعَمَ أَنَّهُ مِنْ شِيَعَتِنَا وَهُوَ مُتَمَسِّكْ بِعُرْوَةِ غَيْرِنَا He says he lies. He who says he's from the Shia of the Ahlul Bayt, yet takes the religion from another group of people, from the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. One day a man came to Imam al-Hasan and he told him, I love your father and I am one of the Shi'as of you and your father. Because what does Shi'a mean? Shi'a means followers of. So he says, I'm one of the Shi'as of your father and I follow you. Imam al-Hasan alayhi salam, he looked down and then he raised his head, he looked at him. And he told him, لا أرى وجهك في الوجوه ولا اسمك في الأسماء. I do not see your name in the list of Shi'as of the Ahlul Bayt. And I do not see your face as a familiar face of the Shi'as of the Ahlul Bayt. And then he tells him, if you want, consider yourself a muhib. Consider yourself someone who loves the Ahlul Bayt. But being a true Shi'a, this is... Being a Shia means that you are the best of creation. You have reached that high level, the level of Ammar, the level of Abu Dhar, the level, the level of Salman, the level of the companions of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, who gave up everything that they had for the sake of the Imam of their time. Are we willing yeah. to sacrifice for the Imam of our time? Now, the army that killed Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, who were they? What group of people were they? <coughs> Historians say that the army that killed Imam al Hussein, the least number says that they were 30,000. The narrations say that most of them, and all of them, they were from Kufa. There was not one soldier from Sham that came to kill Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. It was an army that came out of Kufa to stand against Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. So some people, they say yes, since it was Kufa, since they came out of Kufa, then that means it was the Shia that killed Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. However, that's not the case. Because if we analyze 
we will see that at that time, Kufa was not like the Kufa that we know today. Kufa was not a Shia city. Kufa was not a city that had Shias in it. It was a military city that was, that it was a camp, a base that was started by the second Khalifa, Umar ibn al-Khattab, and he ordered Muslims to go there in the Muslim conquests. And then Amir al-Mu'mineen, he also had to go there. And the people that were there during the time of Amir al-Mu'mineen, many of them, they saw Amir al-Mu'mineen, of course there were some Shias, but many of them, they saw Amir al-Mu'mineen as the fourth Khalifa, not as the first Imam. And there are many stories that prove this, many narrations that prove this. One day when Amir al-Mu'mineen was in Kufa, the month of Ramadan started. At night time, he saw that the Muslims, they were gathered in the masjid praying taraweeh prayer. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he told them taraweeh is not the sunnah of Rasulullah. And all Muslims, they agreed that it was not the sunnah of Rasulullah. Rasulullah never did he pray or did he order people to pray taraweeh. Because taraweeh, salat al-layl, it's a mustahab prayer. It's a recommended prayer. And a recommended prayer cannot be prayed in jama'ah. This is what Rasulullah told the Muslims. And then after Rasulullah came Abu Bakr, he did not pray taraweeh in jama'ah. And then the second Khalifa Umar, he came, he saw the Muslims praying in the masjid, he told them, why don't you all pray taraweeh, pray jama'ah. So when Ali ibn Abi Talib came in Kufa, he told the Muslims not to pray taraweeh because this was not the sunnah of Rasulullah. We have to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah. He sent Imam al-Hasan to them. You know what the people of Kufa began to do in the masjid? They began to yell, Wa sunnata Umarah, wa sunnata Umarah. We want to follow the sunnah of Umar. Not even the sunnah of Rasulullah. So then Amir al-Mu'mineen, he said, leave them. So this proves that many of the people that were in Kufa, they were not Shias of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Many of them, they gave Amir al-Mu'mineen a difficult time. You go and you read Nahj al-Balagha, you see that in many narrations he would tell them, Ya Ashbah al-Rajal, Wala Rajal. You are not even men, you are cowards. La hukma liman la yuta. They would not obey Amir al muminin And you see in the battles, in the battle of Safin, there was a group of Muslims that turned against Amir al muminin who were on the side of Amir al muminin Why? Because Muawiyah, he fooled them by raising the Qur'an. He placed the Qur'an on his spear. Some people, they saw the Qur'an is raised by Muawiyah, then we will not fight Muawiyah anymore. Amir al-Mu'mineen told them, I am the Qur'an al-Natiq. I am the speaking Qur'an according to the hadith of Rasulullah. He's fooling you. They told him, stop the war. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he was very close to getting rid of Muawiyah. They told him, stop the war or else we will kill you. And they were truly going to kill Amir al-Mu'mineen. And then there was a group of Khawarij. One of those men from those Khawarij was Shimr ibn al Joshan, the man that killed Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam. Now is that, are those groups of people that are considered Shias of the Ahlul Bayt? There were groups of people on the day of Ashura, Imam al-Hussein, he stands to pray. One of them, he tells him, he tells Imam al Hussein, why are you praying? Your prayer is not going to bring you anywhere. You're going to go to the hellfire. This is how they speak to the grandson of Rasulullah. <laughs> now, is this one of the safat, one of the actions of a Shia, a follower of the Ahlul Bayt? On the day of Ashura, Imam al Hussein, he told them, why are you killing me? What have I done to you? Have I stolen from you? Have I abused you? Have I talked bad about you? What have I done to you? They told him, نَقْتُلُكَ بُغْضًا minna لِأَبِيك We are killing you because your only crime is that you are the son of Ali ibn Abi Talib. Is this a Shia of the Ahlul Bayt? Are these actions of Shia? Yes, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he called them Shia. But Shia just means followers. He tells them yeah, on the day of Ashura, after Imam al Hussein was still alive, they began to attack the camp of Imam al Hussein, the women and the children. 
He began to call them, Ya Shi'ata Ali Abi Sufyan, Illam Yakun Lakum Deen, Wakuntum La Takafun Al Ma'ad, Fakunu Ahraran Fi Dunyakum. You are the Shi'as of Al Abu Sufyan. You are the Shi'as of Muawiyah and Yazid. And you are the Shi'as of Abu Sufyan, the man who waged a war against Rasulullah ever since the first day Rasulullah told people to believe. And then his son Muawiyah came and he waged a war against Amir al Mu'mineen. And then Yazid came and he killed Imam al Hussein. Of course, today, these nawasab that we were talking about earlier, they come and they say, Yazid had nothing to do with it. Why are you Shi'as, you gather in Muharram and you keep cursing Yazid? He had nothing to do with it. If he had nothing to do with it, then why was the head of Imam al Hussein taken all the way to Sham? Why was the family of Rasulullah taken all the way to Sham? He had the head of Imam al Hussein in front of him and he was speaking poetry to the head of Imam al Hussein. He speaks about his forefathers. He speaks about his forefathers. He says, Laibat Hashim of Il Mulk, Fala Khabarun Ja Awala Wahyun Nazal. Bani Hashim played with power. There was no Wahi, no revelation, there was nothing. And then he would say, Layta Ashyahi bi Badrin Shahidu, Jaza al Khazra Juwak al Asal, La Ahalu was Tahalu Farahan. He says, Only if my ancestors, my fathers and uncles who were killed by the sword of Ali ibn Abi Talib in the battle of Badr, only if they see today how the game has been switched. Now it's Hussein's had the son of Rasulullah, it's in front of me. This was Yazid. But today you still find that Yazid has people that say, no, 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 Yazid did not do anything. Do not talk about Yazid. So it was not the Shia that killed Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. It was the Shia of Bani Sufyan and Al Umayyah. Now someone might come and say, okay, what about the letters? There were letters that were sent to Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And Imam al Hussein, he brought out those letters. And he began to call out some of the names of the ones who signed the letters. Al-Hajjar ibn Abjur and many other names. He began to call them out on the day of Ashura. He told them, didn't you sign this letter here? He brought out the letters with him. These men, they were also not Shia. And these men, they just wanted to, they thought that Imam Hussein salam was coming and they, ha they did not think that the grandson of Rasulullah was going to be killed because there was truly a revolution that was going on. And many people thought that Imam al Hussein was going to come. So there were many people that signed their name so that when the day Imam al Hussein comes and he truly has power, they will tell him, See, I signed. I was one of the first that signed with you. So that they tell him, I also had my name. But then the day it turned against the Ahlul Bayt, they go on the day of Ashura. These men that signed, one of them he tells, he tells Imam al Hussein, Inzil ala hukm bani umumatik. Follow your cousins. What's the difference? Yazid is from Bani Umayyah. They are the cousins of Bani Hashim. What's the difference? You come and give power to Bani ha Give power to Yazid. It's okay. This is what these men were saying. Is this the true Safat? The true quality of a Shia of the Ahlul Bayt, the Shias that we, the, the qualities that we recited earlier. Now someone might come and say, "Okay, they, they were not Shias. What about the real Shias that were in Kufa? There were some Shias in Kufa. When you look at the history, you will see that ever since the time, ever since the martyrdom of Amir al Mu'minin, year 41 after Hijra." The Shias in Kufa, they were persecuted. And many of them were in the jails and the prisons. And many of them were killed by Muawiyah. And then by the governments that came after. Muawiyah, he sent a letter to his governor in Kufa. He told them, see who loves Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was the first who started the sunnah of cursing Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Ahlul Bayt. And then he wrote a letter. He said, see who loves Ali ibn Abi Talib and have sanctions be placed on that person. Do not give him his monthly or weekly salary. So you see the Shias, they had economic sanctions. 
Second, he says, see who loves Ali ibn Abi Talib, destroy his home over his head. The same thing Israel is doing now. The same thing the governments that follow Bani Umayyah are doing right now to the Shias in Yemen. Destroying their homes, wiping out cities, just because they are Shia. Destroy their homes over their heads. And then he writes a third letter. He says, see who has love for Ali ibn Abi Talib and kill that person. Many of the Shias, they were killed. Many of them were oppressed. They had nowhere to go. And you see that many of them, for example, Al-Muhtar, one of them, Al-Muhtar, who had a rebellion after the death of, after the martyrdom of Imam Hussein, the day of Ashura, he was in the jail of Abaydullah ibn Ziyad. In fact, the city of Kufa, it was under martial law. When Abaydullah ibn Ziyad, he came and he took over, there was a, there was so much strict control over the city that no one could leave the city or enter the city. And whoever that they thought was a Shia of the Ahlul Bayt, they would right away grab him and place him in prison. So this is what happened to the true Shias. And then, of course, there were others. There were others who did love the Ahlul Bayt. Who, whose hearts were, the, were with the Ahlul Bayt, alayhum salam. However, because of a few dinars, some gold that they gave them, and because of this dunya, they allowed and they left the imam of their time to be killed all alone in the battle, of, in the land of Karbala. There were many that told Imam Hussein, I want to live. I don't want to come and give myself. I don't want to die right now. And of course, we have to think about ourselves when the imam of our time comes, what are we going to answer him? What are we going to tell him when he tells me, come right now, are you willing to leave your job and your family and your work and everything that you have if the Imam comes tomorrow? The ones who followed Imam Hussein, they left everything. They left everything. This is why they became known as the Ansar of Imam Hussein. And inshallah, tomorrow we will remember the Ansar of Imam Hussein. But there were some men there were some groups of people who they said, No, I want to live. I don't want, I'm not ready to die right now. One of them was a man by the name of Ubaidullah ibn al Hur al Jufi. This man, as Imam al Hussein was traveling towards Kufa, he passed, he saw a tent in one of the villages that he passed through. He saw a tent. On that tent, there was a spear. It shows that this is a fighter, this is a soldier. So he finds out that it is Ubaidullah ibn al-Hurr al jafi who was one of the known men in Al-Kufa. So Imam al Hussein he sends one of the men who was with him, he tells him, go and ask Ubaidullah to join us and be our supporter. This man, he goes and he tells Ubaidullah, Aba Abdullah, the grandson of Rasulullah, the son of Fatima, he's inviting you to join him and aid him and be his supporter. This man, Ubaidullah, he tells him, Hussein is the same, is the very reason that I left Kufa. I left Kufa so that I don't have to hear about Hussein and I don't have to get involved with a group of people fighting Hussein or, or be on the side that is fighting Hussein. Because many people, they were pressured into fighting Imam Hussein. He said, I don't want to have anything to do with this. But subhanAllah, the camp, the caravan of Imam Hussein, it passes right by him. And then the messenger, he goes back to Imam Hussein and he tells him he refuses to come. Here, Imam Hussein, the hadith says he went by himself. He walked to him. Look at the humbleness of Aba Abdullah. Imam Hussein, he knew he was going to die, but he wants to take people with him to paradise. He wants people to be saved with him. He goes with his children. They are walking to the tent of this man. Imam al Hussein tells him, O oh, Ubaidullah, you have the noob, you have sins. Isn't it time that you purify yourself? And Allah, don't you want Allah to forgive you? Come and join us. I am the grandson of Rasulullah. 
Didn't you hear what Rasulullah said about me? Husaynun minni wa ana min Husayn. This man, he told him, I'm Husayn, I can't. I'm too attached to this life. I want to live. He told Imam al Hussein, Ubaidullah told Imam al Hussein, I know the haqq is with you, and I know dying with you is dying and going straight to paradise, but I want to live. How many of us are actually like that? Let us put ourselves in the place of this man. What would we have answered to Imam al Hussein? He told the Imam, he told him, but I have a fast horse. I have a fast horse. Now every time I've chased someone with that horse, I've caught on to him. And every time someone is chasing me with a horse, I've been able to flee away. I'll give this horse to you. Imam al Hussein tells him, we don't want your horse. You think I came here because I want your horse? I don't want your horse. I want to save you. Then the Imam tells him, take yourself away from us. Because if you hear our wa'iyah, if you hear me calling on the day of Ashura, if when I'm, when I'm surrounded, if you hear me calling, Ala hal min nasirin yansuruna, I heard from Rasulullah say that when the Ahlul Bayt call for someone to help them and that person hears them and refuses to help them, Allah will throw him on his face in the hellfire. Take yourself away. There were people like that. They loved the Ahlul Bayt. They know the haqq is with the Ahlul Bayt. But they were willing to leave the Imam and leave the Imam to die all alone on the day of Karbala. <coughs> and today we remember Muslim ibn Aqil, the Safir, the ambassador of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, who was sent by Imam al Hussein. And yet this man was also betrayed and he was oppressed. He enters Kufa, 18,000 men, they give him bay'ah, meaning that they're giving Imam al Hussein bay'ah. And then Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he enters and he takes over and he spreads the fear in Kufa. These 18,000, they become <coughs> 4,000 and the 4,000 become 100 and the 100 become two people until he is all alone in Kufa, all alone. A mother, she would come and take her son, telling him, leave him, this is a fitna, come, come in the house. Another wife, she would call her husband and tell her husband, don't be involved in what's going to happen, there's going to be bloodshed, there's going to be fighting, stay out of this, let's see what happens, and then we will go and support. Until Muslim ibn Aqil was left all alone. But Muslim ibn Aqil, he had wrote a letter to Imam al Hussein telling him to come. These men have given me allegiance. They have given you allegiance and they're waiting for you. But suddenly they turned against Muslim ibn Aqil. One night in the masjid, Muslim ibn Aqil, he's praying at Asha prayer at night. He turns around, he sees there's no one with him. <coughs> there's no one with him. He's walking in the city of Kufa all alone. The one who he was staying in his house, Hali ibn Urwa, was taken as a prisoner by Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Where should he go? His host is in the prison of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. Where should he go? He begins to walk in the alleys of Kufa all alone. Gharib. He's all alone. He becomes thirsty. He stands at the door. He sees a lady by the name of Taw'a. She's standing in front of her house, waiting for her son to come. He stands in front of her house. She looks at him. She tells him, what do you need? This honorable lady that every year she is remembered. She was a normal lady. She was a normal lady. No one knew about her. But every year she is remembered for her actions. It's one action that makes you live eternity for eternity and Allah will be satisfied with you. She tells him, what are you doing here? He tells her, I'm thirsty. She comes and brings him water and then she sees he's still standing in front of her house. She tells him, what are you doing in front of my house? It doesn't look right for a man, a stranger to be standing in front of my house. Go to your family, go to your ashira. 
He tells her, Wallah, laysa li fi hadha al-Misr ahlan wala ashira. I don't have a family in the city. I don't have a tribe that will watch over me and protect me. She tells him, who are you? He tells her, take me in, protect me. Let me have this one night where I seek refuge in your house and I promise you that on the day of judgment, I will be a shafi'ah for you. She tells him, who are you? He tells her, Ana Muslim ibn Aqil, Safir al Hussein. I am Muslim ibn Aqil, the ambassador of Imam al Hussein. These people, they have all turned against me. She welcomes him. He goes in the house. He begins to pray. The whole night he prays. He sleeps for a few moments. In his sleep, he sees Amir al Mu'mineen, his uncle telling him, oh Muslim, you will be with us shortly. We are anticipating you. You will come with us. You will be with us in paradise. Muslim ibn Aqil, he spends that night until dawn. Then the army, they had surrounded the house. Her son, he had gone and told on Muslim ibn Aqil. The army, they come to the house. Muslim ibn Aqil, he begins to fight them courageously, reminding them of the fierce, cra- of the fierce courage of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, his uncle. They fight him until he is injured. He falls, they catch him, they hold on to him, they take him to the palace of Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad. He does not say salam to Ubaidullah. He says, my Amir is Hussein. I do not say salam to Ubaidullah. Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad, he orders for Muslim to be taken on top of the castle. Muslim ibn Aqil, he asks for water. They bring him water. But as he brings it in front of his mouth, his mouth was bleeding because he was injured. As he was bleeding, the blood it fell in the water. Here you see the difference. The mu'min, he refuses to drink the water that has become najis. He does not drink it anymore. Subhanallah, how it was destined for Imam Hussein and all of his companions to die thirsty, including Muslim ibn Aqil. Then he says, allow me to pray. He prays to rak'ahs. They see Muslim ibn Aqil crying. They tell him, oh, oh, son of Aqil, why are you crying? You were just fighting so courageously. Men like you do not cry. He says, I do not cry for myself. I cry for Hussein and the children of Hussein who don't know what's going on. They don't know that you have betrayed me and the people have turned against me. Then he faces towards Hajaz. On top of the castle, he faces Hajaz. He sends his salams to Imam al Hussein. Assalamu alayka ya Aba Abdullah. Irja' min haythu atayt, fa inna al qawm qad ghadaru bi. Oh Aba Abdullah, return. Do not come to Kufa because they have betrayed me. The people, they were waiting. They were waiting to see what happens to obey the, to, to Muslim ibn Aqil. Suddenly, they saw the body of a Muslim and the head of Muslim fall on the ground. Then they tied ropes to the feet of Muslim ibn Aqil and they began to drag him in the streets of Kufa. News reaches Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. The messengers they tell Imam al Hussein. Imam al Hussein he begins to cry and then he says, Bring me Hamida, the daughter of Muslim ibn Aqil. He brings Hamida, he wipes his hand on her head. She tells him, Oh my uncle, I see that you are treating me like an orphan. Imam 
يا الله نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد